Well, it's announcement time, and whenever we do announcements, we're always looking for interesting places to do them. And Joelle, you've outdone yourself. Where are we? Well, I actually have not outdone myself. It's the children's department with Pastor Shauna and her assistant Joanna. They have outdone themselves. They have a big team. Yes, they do. And there are many others that have been helping. But this is actually the registration area for VBS. Tons of children and families have come through. It's been loud and joyful. Tons about God and just tons of activities for all the kids. Such a, so. a, a great ministry. And by the way, you're gonna be hearing more about it in the middle of the service. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that. Now, speaking of Pastor Shauna, Exciting thing. very special thing, <laughs> June 26, on the rooftop at 6.30, she has a book launch, and her book is entitled More Than Balloons. Now, she's really passionate about providing resources for Sabbath school. It's just going to be a special time to celebrate the book and let people know that this resource is available. So put that on your calendar, June 26, at 6.30, on the rooftop. And then this is a summer that you may want to find something for your kids to do. Pine Springs Ranch Summer Camp may be the answer for you. Take a look at this fun video. If Pine Springs Ranch is of interest to you, there are a couple of things we wanna tell you first. Financial assistance is available. It will go from June the 29th through July the 31st. So there's actually a big window of opportunity to go. And it's for kids ages seven through 17. So you can go to our website, click on that. The registration form will be available. And we just hope that if this is something you can do that you'll send your kids, it's a great opportunity. Now, just a couple more things about some summer fun. First of all, Praxis is planning a whitewater rafting trip. It's July 10 through 14. There's some camping involved, and of course, going on the American River. For more information, go to our website. There is a cost involved, and you do need to register, and the number of slots is decreasing rapidly, so we encourage you, if you wanna go, check it out. And then on June the 25th, which is just next weekend at eight o'clock at the Redlands Auditorium is our Fresh Picked Improv. Now this is with, I think some of your team actually are- Scotty is involved in that, I know. putting this together. We're partnering with the Redlands Church, also Crosswalk. This is a time of improv where all of the actors will be taking um, suggestions actually from the audience and they'll create scenes. It'll just be a great time of laughter and fun and community. So if you want to attend that, remember it's next weekend, June the 25th at eight o'clock in the Redlands Auditorium. Next is a great opportunity to serve. It's our quilting ministry. It's gonna be June 26 and 27. That's a Sunday and Monday. They have a potluck each day. There are a few needs they would encourage people to bring. For that information, go to our website or our bulletin, but really encourage you to get involved in that. And then last week, we announced a new ministry. Actually, it was Pastor Linda and Pastor Adriana that did. And here they are again to tell you about this really incredible opportunity. If you're looking for something to do to help and give back in the community, you may wanna pay special attention to this video. Good morning, church family. This morning, I'm here with Adriana Pereira, our music and worship director. And together, we are partnering to bring something very special to our church. The music department and you reach are partnering to bring a special program to juvenile detentions here in the Riverside San Bernardino County. Adriana has been hard at work creating a program for this detention center. And this morning, I'm gonna invite her to share a little bit about what that entails. Yeah, thank you, Linda. We're very happy about this collaboration with you, Rich. And we're going to start going to uh, the San Bernardino Correctional Juvenile to offer a music program there. We will have guitar lessons, piano keyboard lessons, and we will have a choir with them. So we're 
looking for volunteers that would like to join the program. This will happen once a week on Tuesdays. We will uh, be there 6 to 7 p.m. We'll be leaving from the church 5.30 and then we'll be coming back to the church at 7.30. So if you have any experience in playing the guitar, piano, music theory, and would like to get involved, uh, go ahead and visit our UReach website and sign up. We obviously, for the Juvenile Detention Center, the process to volunteer is a bit different, but we will take care of that with you guys. But if you're interested, if you have a passion for prison ministries, working with juveniles, this would probably be the project for you. So we encourage you to sign up. And also, if you can't sign up, if you don't have an hour a week or you're not musically talented like Adriana here, there are other ways that you can help and that's always by financial support. We will need instruments to be able to take into uh, the center. We need guitars, pianos. And so if you're willing to donate for that, they can also do that at UReach. So you can do that online, drop a check and put on the memo there that it's for our Allegro ministry. That is what we are calling this partnership, Allegro. So on the memo line there, just put Allegro Ministries and that will go to purchase instruments. We thank you so much for your support and for your blessings. And we're excited to see what God will do in this new ministry. Blessings. Last but not least, we want to give a shout out to all the fathers out there. Which includes you. That is correct. <laughs> and we want to remind you, on your way out, we have something special for you. So don't forget to pick that up. And I believe that's it yep. for all of our announcements. We have all of this stuff on our website. You can check the bulletin to get more information because I know it was a lot of information, a lot of times and dates. So you can go there for that. And with that, we hope you have a wonderful Sabbath day.
And it's great to have Micklin with us, isn't it, again? And welcome home, Micklin. And we want to thank, but they're all gone, the Chan family singers and friends. Uh, they, you'll hear more from them in, in a bit. And the choir. We're glad to have the choir here today. So welcome to worship on this beautiful Sabbath day with comfortable temperature, and we're grateful to have you here. And those of you who are viewing on electronically, we're glad to have you as well and consider you a part of our worship group. Today is what I like to think of as a high Sabbath because we are celebrating the Lord's uh, communion, the foot washing and the communion service. And we remember the great sacrifice that our Lord made for us and his death and resurrection. And we're grateful for that. And we as Adventists practice uh, open communion. And if any uh, one who is here is welcome to participate in this service today. Jesus said he would not celebrate this again until he did it with us in the kingdom. And so we're looking forward to that day. And that gives us hope and anxious anxiousness for the second coming of Jesus. And we look for that day <clears throat> when we will participate with him again. And that time, that time it'll be for real and not just a symbol. Tomorrow is Father's Day. And fathers, we want to say happy Father's Day to you. And we even have a little gift for you. So you've seen the red tents out in front and in the courtyard. And that's where the gifts are. Please stop by and pick up your gifts. All fathers can do that. And again, welcome to worship as we celebrate the Lord's Supper today.
Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this Sabbath. Thank you so much that we can be here to commune together, but also take communion together. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would especially touch the heart of each father and touch the relationship that anyone might might have here with their father. Heavenly Father, I pray that first and foremost, you would restore and rejuvenate um, our relationships with you as our Heavenly Father. And then, Lord, come and fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may restore any relationship that needs restoration with our earthly fathers. Heavenly Father, there are some here that may be missing their fathers that are um, far away or no longer with us. So I pray that you will comfort those. Some of us have worries for our fathers, so I pray that you will also comfort and guide them. Lord, we also come to you with other burdens that we want to bring to your feet today. Um, Those that are ill, those that are concerned for someone who is ill or going through a hard time, Um, needing resources. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would intercede. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would especially be with those today um, that are able to hear my voice, that, Lord, you would rise them up to help be the hands and feet for those that are in need, whether that be a hug, a listening ear, or more tangible needs. Heavenly Father, I pray that you be with everyone as we listen to today's sermon, today's message, um, that we would be able to bring our burdens to your feet. So, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity today and for your beautiful Sabbath. We thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence and that we can pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, boys and girls. This is your special time. We would love for you to come join us right up here. We want to show our entire church what we were busy doing this week. I see you. Come on up. Some of you are wearing your shirts. Some of you chose not to wear them today. That's okay. Come have a seat. Have a seat up right up here. Right here. Have a seat on the stairs. Oh, it's so good to see you. I've missed seeing you for a day. Come have a seat right here. Yeah. Good. Oh, well, church family, we have had a wonderful VBS program called Kingdom Rock. You may guess the theme. It's a very royal theme. And I have here with me my assistant, Joanna Hartnell. And together, we started months ago planning Vacation Bible School. Joanna, tell me a little bit what your favorite part was. Oh, I had a lot of favorite parts. I just think spending time with our community, we really were able to appreciate and utilize our outdoor amphitheater. It was our second year doing VBS out there, Pastor Shauna, and we had so much fun. It was great. The community was amazing to have parents meeting other parents for the first time. It was fantastic. And I don't know if you notice, but Joanne and I are a little bit hoarse. We didn't plan our voices well, and by Wednesday, they started going because we were so excited to cheer for our knights, our knights in shining armor, Right here to my left is um, Sir Kirk. He is this handsome um, knight, is my husband. We have Sir Chris here, 
good friend. And we have Sir John, who is Joanna's husband. So as you can see, we pulled on family and very close friends to come alongside us. In fact, Sir John was overseeing all the decorations and he made all the castles himself. Awesome. Yeah, and our knights had, yes. Thank you to Sir John. Our, we had so much fun with our knights, right kids? What, what are some of the activities that they did that we saw them do? They battled with bubbles, they brought out inflatable horses, and we just had a really good time teaching our kids to wear the armor of God. Now, boys and girls, I don't know what your favorite one, what your favorite activity was, but we had all kinds of activities. We had the tournament of games. What else did we have? We had keys to the kingdom where the kids had to find the keys inside of a giant castle. We had majestic pony rides as they rode around campus. And we had a jousting game, a family-friendly jousting game. And of course, the little castle climbers were for our little toddlers. We had so much fun. But boys and girls, right now, I want you to stand up. Stand up, everybody stand up. And we're going to tell our church family right out here what our Bible point was. What was day one? God's love Help helps us stand, stand strong. strong. In fact, you can read the signs. You join us. Day two, what was day two? Day two was family and friends help us stand strong. And then day three, hold it up. Prayer helps us stand strong. We've got so-so here. And so-so is Sir Valiant the Lion. And it says, trusting God helps us stand strong. And then our last one, Victoria, what was it? The Bible helps us stand strong. You know what I'm going to miss the most this week, boys and girls? I'm going to miss seeing you every single day. But as you go home, as you go out into your community, I want you to remember to stand strong for God. You can go back to your seats now. For all of you sitting here, we want to show a little recap of some of the activities and the fun we had. So I invite you to look up at the screen and see our video. Yeah. 
What did you learn at VBS this week? Sometimes we have to be kind to each other and treat each other good. Just stand up for God. Um, I learned that uh, God can help us be strong, the Bible can help us be strong. That God could help us in, uh, in tough times. I learned that God could help us stay strong no matter what we're going through. I learned that that in medieval times, people kept on fighting a lot, and God is trying to help them survive, and they need to trust in God so they can survive. Yes, let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Pastor Shauna, Joanna, that was a fabulous program. We try to keep the kids engaged at church, and while there, they learn about Jesus. Amen. You probably heard the old metaphor that goes something like this. How do you eat an elephant? Well, the answer is one bite at a time. Now, I've always been uncomfortable with that metaphor because they're endangered species, and I don't think we should eat them. And I hear they're kind of gamey, so we, let's not do that. But I get the metaphor. The metaphor is we have a large task ahead of us, friends. And I want to say, how do you eat a giant chocolate, 7,000 pounds? We do it together. We, we take this task on together. Many people depend on others to provide for the budget, the ministries here, and the building program. And I want to encourage each and every one. There might be some with some reservations. But the only way we can meet our major obligation is if we do it together. We have many ministries here that rely on your support. Our budget comes around every July 1. That means we are in the end of our uh, fiscal year here in June. And this church is always so faithful, and we want to say thank you. But friends, we've taken on a big bite with the building program, and I want to encourage you Please be a part. It has been such a wonderful blessing even now, but it will be for another hundred years to come. And we need to pay our debts together. So I have some good news to report. Many of you looked at the back of the bulletin, have noticed that that graphic, uh, that little graph, doesn't change. Have you noticed that? 10%? It seems like it's been that way for six months. Well, probably longer than that. But I'm here to announce that next Sabbath, you are going to see 11% paid of our principal, and that's a really big deal. So now it will say $2.7 million applied to our principal. And I believe after this year, it will even be much more than that. The Lord is revealing himself through you. And I mean that. I love to see how you support those things that are important to you, and let's do it together. Friends, no matter what's happening at this church, we build for his kingdom.
I'm with Daryl. It's really good to have Micklin back. So about four years ago, both of our kids got married in about a five-week span. It was intense. I remember thinking at that time, so this is what the families and the parents of all those couples I've had the wonderful privilege of performing weddings for were going through. This is intense. I learned a lot of things during that time. I learned things about, for example, the invite list. So Anita and I had an invite list that we made up. It was a good list. It's a long list. You were on it, just so you know. And our kids and their future spouses made lists. And then Anita and I made the mistake of showing them our list. And they looked and they said, who are all those people? And we said, well, they're our friends. And they said, we, we, we don't know those people. They're surely good people, but we don't know them. We said, yes, but they're, they're really good people. And they said, but it's our wedding. And that's when I learned something. When it comes to a wedding, the invite list is finally decided by the groom and the bride. So if you didn't get an invitation, please don't blame me. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but it's an important lesson, especially as we come to the supper table of the Lord. We come to a table here and have questions at times in mind. Maybe the key question of which is this, who gets invited? It's not a small question for a range of different reasons. For one, it's a very important question because this, this is just the rehearsal dinner. The wedding supper of the Lamb is what's going to ultimately matter. And you see, those who accept the invitation here are on the invite list there. So it matters who gets invited. Furthermore, throughout Christian history, for the last 2,000 years, people have fought over who gets invited to the table. Some people have said, anyone who wants to is invited. And others have responded, oh, no, 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 only those who belong. Some have said, you have to be good enough to deserve it, and others have responded, but Jesus said, I came to call sinners, not the righteous. Some have wanted to roll out the welcome mat while others have locked the front door. So it's a legitimate question. Who is on the invite list? Who decides who will come? Table fellowship was extremely important in the world and the day of Jesus. In fact, just to get a little bit of a glimpse of how important it indeed was, listen to these words from Scott Barchi, uh, emeritus professor of history down at UCLA. His specialty is that first century world in which Jesus lived and worked. Listen to what Barchi says about this thing called table fellowship. He writes, it would be difficult to overestimate the importance of table fellowship for the cultures of the Mediterranean basin in the first century of our era. Mealtimes were far more than occasions for individuals to consume nourishment. Being welcomed at a table for the purpose of eating food with another person had become a ceremony richly symbolic of friendship, intimacy, and unity. Thus, betrayal or unfaithfulness toward anyone with whom one had shared the table was viewed as particularly reprehensible. On the other hand, when persons were estranged, a meal invitation opened the way to reconciliation. Even everyday mealtimes were highly complex events in which social values, boundaries, statuses, and hierarchies were reinforced. Anyone who challenged these rankings and boundaries would be judged to have acted dishonorably, a serious charge in cultures based on the values of honor and shame. Transgressing these customs consistently, consistently would make a person an enemy of social stability. Table fellowship mattered. 
So who gets invited? In a world like that one we just read, that those words just described, who is Jesus going to invite? It really matters. We have pretty good ideas, some of us, about who should be here and who should not. Sometimes we think the one that shouldn't be here is me. And other times we think it's you. So what might Jesus practice? What he did at that time teach us? We go to Luke 22 for an answer to that question. Luke chapter 22. We're going to read just three verses that set the context and describe what happened and Jesus' attitude toward who gets invited. So Luke 22, we begin reading in verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Eagerly desired. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. You might remember that Greek word. We've talked about it once or twice over the years. It's a strong word, a forceful word. It can be translated negatively or positively, depending on the context and what the object of that desire is. When it's translated negatively, it's translated as covet or lust. When it's translated positively, it's translated Like it's translated here, I have eagerly desired. There's an intensity, a passion of desire about what's about to happen. In fact, the literal Greek word appears twice in two different forms. What Jesus is saying is, with desire, I have desired to eat this meal with you before I suffer. So if we conclude anything at all, we have to conclude that the faces around the table were intentionally there. Jesus, with this desire to eat with them, had made key choices about who would join him at the table. So who were they? Who were these faces around the table? The first thing we notice as we peer in on that group in that upper room is that this is a motley crew, a ragtag group. They're largely uneducated. They're unprofessional. They're unemployed. They're unable to do much in the world of their day. In fact, there's not a, a, a face there. Well, maybe there's one. But as for the rest of them, there's not a face there whose picture would have appeared in the high school yearbook under the designation, most likely to succeed. They don't listen all that well to Jesus, and when they do listen, they tend to forget. They fight among each other a lot. They're always trying to elbow each other out of the way, get the best place at the table, the highest rung on the ladder. This is a suspect group of people, Jesus. It makes me want to say to him, Jesus, you may want to vet that list a little more. You may want to edit the list. And Jesus says, my party, my list, they stay. Well, Jesus, let's just take a few of them around the table. I mean, look at Matthew over there, Matthew the tax collector. To anyone in his world, that would mean Matthew the collaborator, the traitor, the occupying force that held sway to their land, the hated Romans. Matthew collaborated with them. More than likely, he paid for the right to be a tax collector so that as he built his fellow country men and women out of their hard-earned money, he could line Rome's coffers and line Matthew's pocket. Matthew the collaborator. You sure you want him on your list, Jesus? 
And Jesus says, my meal, my list, Matthew stays. All right. Well, look over there to the left of Matthew, if you get my drift. To the left of Matthew, Simon. Not Simon Peter, Simon the Zealot. Zealot, that was a term, a technical term in the world of the day for the people who had a mindset that said, we will fight to keep Jewish lands and the temple and thought processes and religion pure. We will do anything we need to. We will suffer intensely. We will kill if we have to, but we will get rid of these oppressors. Jesus, the zealot, and the collaborator sitting there next to each other, you need to vet your list a bit more carefully. You sure you want the zealot on the list? And Jesus says, my supper, my list. The zealot stays. All right. But what about that other Simon? Simon sitting across from him. Simon Peter. Come on, Simon Peter was, he couldn't stop talking. I, I've, I've thought, maybe I didn't learn Greek well enough, because if I knew Greek well enough, I think finding in these Gospels a text wouldn't be hard. It's the text where Jesus looks at Peter and says, Peter, shut up. Put a sock in it. I haven't found the text yet, but it's got to be there. Because that's who Peter was. Always talking, always saying things that were out of context, sticking his foot in his mouth, embarrassing himself. And I've wondered, does he embarrass Jesus? E even on this night... Jesus looks at him and says, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, all of you, and, and, and to sift you as wheat, Simon. He will be so powerful that before the rooster crows tomorrow, you will deny me three times. And true to form, Peter said, no, 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 no. All these others, all these others around here, you can't trust them. I'll be the last one with you. I'm your last best hope, Jesus. I'll stand right beside you and fight to the death. And Jesus says, I want you to remember those words next time you hear a rooster crow. And I say, Jesus, come on going to deny he even knows you. Vet your list. And Jesus says, my meal, my list, Peter stays. Just let anybody in here. And then our eye falls on the one seated next to the host. He's the one whose picture very well may have appeared under most likely to succeed. He, he's, he's more refined. He's more polished. He's more slick than the rest of them. He's well-dressed, has his money in the bag, and has his hand on the money. Jesus speaks to him as well, to this man from Kerioth, Judas Iscariot. I know what you're up to, Judas. Jesus is still trying to reach him. And we all this time want to say, Jesus, please be careful with who you invite. Vet the list. And Jesus says, it's my meal, it's my party, Judas stays.
And I just wonder about that. Because for the next 2,000 years, people will fight over who gets to be at the table. And yet, if I take Jesus' list right, he's saying anybody can be at the table. Any of us. Even me, when I'm failed and, and, and messed up. Even you, when it's been a horrible week. Even that person you sit here, noticing out of the corner of your eye, who sits here in this sanctuary, and you're thinking, what are they doing here? They're on his list. That's what they're doing here. And Jesus says, it's my meal. It's my party. They stay. It's really quite stunning. Stunning because it's not just about this table. It's about the wedding supper of the Lamb. The grand table. At the great wedding, eating the true banquet. Because you see, this is just the rehearsal dinner. The wedding's yet to come. This is the rehearsal dinner at which those who are participating are giving their RSVP to that supper, to that feast. When we come here and participate, we eat, we drink with gratitude for what happened, what Jesus did. But we eat, we drink with hope for what is to come. Because remember the rest of our text? I have eagerly desired to eat this meal with you before I suffer. For, do you remember the rest? I will not eat it again until... We eat it in the kingdom of God. It's gratitude. And it's an RSVP. And incredibly, anyone can come. So if you're tempted to tell Jesus to vet his list, to look it over more carefully, just remember what he says. It's my meal. It's my wedding. It's my invite list. And anybody who wants to can come. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has long practiced an open communion. That means if you're, if you're a guest, if you're a first-time guest today among us, we invite you to the table. We do follow John 13's example of washing feet as we come to the table. We'll slip out of this worship center. We'll go back to the buildings kind of behind us there. Participate together, and I'm asking our family to keep an eye out for those who may be guests to draw them in. And then we'll return to this place to enjoy the supper table of the Lord. God bless you in rich ways as you enjoy his scandalous grace. Amen.
When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Oops. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Somebody once said, The world drinks to forget. The Christian drinks to remember. Shall we pray? Lord, you handed these sacred symbols to your disciples. And there in the upper room, only you knew the awful significance that they represent. That the very next day, your body would be ripped up and your blood shed to save us. Today we know that. But it brings us back, it calls us back to that moment as we gaze again at the enormity of your Calvary love. Your life poured out for me and for these two Christian brothers sitting on my right and my left and for every redeemed sinner in this church and in this lost world. Jesus, we thank you. We bow down before you. We love and worship you, and we will go out from this place and praise you, our beloved, our beloved King. Amen.
as we sit in the stillness, it is possible to hear in our minds and in our hearts. The words of Jesus as he reached out to his disciples on that night with bread and with the juice of the vine and said, this represents my broken body and my spilled blood. The Apostle Paul later would pick up on that and would say, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night he was betrayed, took bread and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, those faces around the table, and said to them, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Paul continues on to say, After the same manner he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink from it, all of you, in remembrance of me. It is as the flavor lingers on our lips that we will pray for the savor of Christ's love and grace to linger in our hearts. We're going to end with prayer and then give you an opportunity to sit for a few moments listening to the postlude and just pondering the love and the grace that has been extended to us and our reception, our RSVP, to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Gracious God, from the bottom of our hearts and souls, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Hello, everybody. It's another bright and beautiful day, and I'm so glad to greet you all. So join me now. First among our friends this week, Floyd and Eileen Peterson, Loma Linda University Church, 55th wedding anniversary. Warmest congratulations, you two. And best congratulations also to Don and Jean Voris, College Place, Washington, marking their 57th anniversary. And Don is 77. Congratulations to you two dear friends, Don and Jean. Chandler Baum is a part of the media team at University Church. And Chandler's having a birthday, and I want to give you special shout, Chandler, and thank you so much for all the good work you do with media at Loma Linda Church. Hello, Gloria Wong, a part of the Villa family, having a birthday this week. Warmest congratulations to you, Gloria. And the same goes to you, dear brother Clarence Brummett. Clarence Nestor have also moved to the Villa, and I wish you, Clarence, warmest greetings for your birthday. And folks, I want you to look at these pictures. Betsy and I got to be with Professor Melvin Johnson, who played the Adagio of Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto at our wedding almost 65 years ago. And here he is at 99 years old, and we see him with his two sons, Roger and Lee. Warmest congratulations, Professor Johnson. And this is David and Isma Brown, who live in Ontario, Oregon, and they're marking their 37th anniversary. And Parson Brown has the neatest Facebook page. I congratulate you two on your wedding anniversary. And Steve and Jenny Thurmond, Chattanooga, Tennessee, are having an anniversary also. Their eighth anniversary, there they are, and here with their two darling little girls. Hello to Irvin Thompson, Sonora, California. So good to talk to you not very long ago, and so glad daughter Yvonne sent me a picture so I could say happy birthday, brother Irvin. And look at this lady. This is Callan Richards, Cedar Woolley, Washington, but really also Walla Walla University, where she graduated just days ago. Congratulations, Callan, and there you are with your proud parents, Kirsten and Lester, and then also with Brother Jefferson. Folks, it's Mother Doctor, Father Doctor, Brother Doctor, and Callan is on the way to Loma Linda School of Medicine. And a big hello to you, Donna Sandifer. I'm so glad to see your name recurring week by week in connection with the Sligo Sabbath School, uh, Faith and Reason. And there you are with dear Chuck. Thank you, Chuck, for your leadership of the Faith and Reason class. Hello to Doug Hart. He's on our right in this picture. He is the senior pastor of the Markham Woods Church in Florida. And this picture was taken on his recent trip to Ukraine with a young Adventist leader by the name of Willis in the middle of the picture and next to him is his wife. They have been doing a remarkable ministry and Doug Hart went there to assist them. They were blessed dramatically. And of course, we continue to pray for these folks and all of our friends in Ukraine. Hello to Dick and Brenda Dirksen, Portland, Oregon, 53rd anniversary. Yes, there you were. And folks, this picture is in the Loma Linda University Church 53 years ago. And we get to be in contact with them now as well. Hello, Bill Tune Study, Temesco Valley, California now, but you've been lots of other places with your music leadership and other talents. Congratulations on your birthday, Bill, and so glad to see you there with wife, Julie. Bob and Mary Jo Dom now live in Niles, Michigan, and they're having their anniversary as well. 
and so glad to see the two of you, and we wish you all the very best. Marge and Leonard Zacherson, Surprise Arizona, are marking their 60th anniversary. Wow, there were lots of June weddings through the years. Congratulations to you two dear friends. And folks, this is our sister, Mary Gugassian, a member of University Church. She's marking her 97th birthday. Much love and warmest congratulations to you, Mary. And this is Ben Maxson, Pastor Maxson. So glad to be reminded of your birthday, Ben. Now in Calhoun, Georgia, I understand, and get to see you there with dear wife, Mary Louise. And hello to John and Marta Stone, Caldwell, Idaho, 26th anniversary, or is it the 27th now? Congratulations to you two. Hello, Sylvia and Bob Sprode, Salem, Oregon, 64th wedding anniversary. There you were, and now we get to see you continuing through the years. Love you too. Congratulations. And that goes for you too, Elfri Frieda and Ben Quizon, part of the University Church. 52nd anniversary for you too. Warmest congratulations also. And a warm, loving hello to Bev Benson, now living in Goodyear, Arizona, marking a birthday. Glad to be reminded, Bev. Love to you, lady. And Roger Heinrich. Roger, bless your heart. We go back a long ways, Upper Columbia Conference, and over the years, other places. Happy birthday, Roger. Glad to see you there with Jeannie. Peggy Liebel, Simi Valley, California, longtime friend from Media Center and Pacific Union office. Wish you all the best for your birthday, Peggy, as I see you there with Brother Lance. And a warm hello to Ernie and Sarah Castillo, a part of our pastoral team here in Loma Linda, 54th wedding anniversary it is. Warmest congratulations. And hello to Richard and Norma Osborne, Marina Valley, now part of University Church. And you two are marking your 53rd anniversary, I believe. On a recent trip to Europe, you were in Florence. And now, folks, you understand why the tower is leaning at Pisa. Ray and Rosie Tate's Westlake Village, 49th anniversary, I think, for you two. Warmest congratulations. And this is my favorite picture of you. David and Aletha Natiak, Battleground, Washington, 26th anniversary for you. And you were recently at Walla Walla. Look at the two of you on each side of your son, Trevor, who graduated from the university. And much love to you, Sylvia Davis, and a warm happy birthday. Wish we could see you a lot more. And look at these two, Doug and Carmen Clark, now live in Port Townsend, Washington. This is their 53rd wedding anniversary. There they were, and now there they are. I know about that wedding because I was there. And Victor and Shelley Ware, your 27th anniversary, I think. Congratulations, you two. Love to see you whenever I can. And that goes for you too, Kimo Smith. Happy, happy birthday, man. You are loved. Your organ is such a blessing, Sabbath after Sabbath. And we wish you all the best. And that goes for my friend Enrique Ramirez, too, who's a part of the maintenance team at University Church. Happy birthday, Enrique. And to you too, Tammy Rubio, a part of the University Church. I miss working with you like I used to when we had communion services. And Christine and Jeff Cassidy, mother, son, part of the University Church, their birthdays are pretty close together. And so I greet the two of you. And finally this week, Ross Calkins, Bellflower, California, pastor there. Uh, and he likes to get out in interesting places with members of his church. Congratulations, Ross. Yes, wonderful day. Happy Sabbath to all. God bless.